Okay, so from the title and thumbnail, you can see today we're talking about Fire Festival. Now, why are we talking about Fire Festival? It happened like eight years ago. It was a complete disaster. And the guy who created it, Billy McFarlane, went to prison, right? So why is this a subject? Well, it's because Billy McFarlane decided to come back out after a year being in prison, after being out of prison for a year. He decided he wanted to reintroduce Fire Festival as Fire Festival 2. Yeah, the guy didn't even have the brains to change the name of the event. Like, he could have at least changed it to something else, right? He could have changed it to something completely different. But no, he's stuck with Fire Festival 2. I feel like that's a message. So for you youngins out there who don't know what Fire Festival is, let's go over it right now, okay? Fire Festival was a fraudulent luxury music festival founded by con artist Billy McFarlane and a rapper named Ja Rule. It was created with the intent of promoting the company's Fire app for booking music talent. The festival was scheduled to take place on April 28th to the 30th and May 5th to the 7th of 2017. So this was a while ago. On the uh, Bahamian, how do you say that? Bahamian, uh, anyway, out there in uh, near the Bahamas, okay? So that's what happened. It was a mess. In fact, I'll show you some pictures. Okay, during the fire festival, you can see all of this destruction, okay? They built these tents on sand and gravel. These tents didn't hold up very well. There wasn't a whole lot of food. There was trash everywhere. People were uncomfortable. They were not in good uh, conditions. In fact, some of the time, uh, storms would roll through and it would actually flood the campgrounds, which obviously was a disaster. Uh, the food was horrible, as you can see here. Um, I'm not sure who thinks this is even edible, but they thought it was, and they thought it was perfectly fine. I mean, if you keep going on, you see people trying to get on buses and trying to eat in these small tents and there wasn't enough space. There wasn't anybody who actually showed up to the venue. Zero musical artists, zero musical artists showed up to this musical festival. And it was it was absolutely horrible. Uh, this is a great picture. Expectation versus reality. That's exactly what they promoted it as. The promotion for the fire festival was actually lovely, right? You had all these models and uh, you had all these cute ladies walking around this beautiful beach. Here, let me see if I can find some. Here we go. All these beautiful ladies kind of sunbathing and having a great time. Oh, it was wonderful. And they were just, you know, having a good time on the boat. And, you know, mm, you know, those kind of things. It was really cute. And yes, yes, there were some controversies with people like Kendall Jenner. And uh, even, I believe that's Hailey Bieber, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I mean, j just looking at the way they promoted the first fire festival and what it turned out to be i cannot believe people are actually considering listen to what i said people are considering investing their money in fire festival two and again if you want to know more about it there is a documentary on netflix i don't know if it's still there but i'm, I'm pretty sure it is but yeah the expectations were outrageous all these ladies oh it's the ladies look at the ladies oh yeah baby we're gonna run on the beach we're gonna have a great time it's gonna be great yes i mean this is really all they showed to be honest with you it was uh billy mcfarlane um you know uh doing his thing on the water and it was ladies a bunch of ladies i mean this is really all they did this this was their entire promotional package was just showing you ladies and pigs apparently they really like that and that's the issue Fire Festival was well documented uh, with regards to the advertisement. They felt as though their advertisements were on fire, huh? and they were. Their ads were great. People were interested. I was interested. I remember seeing these ads when I was younger, and I was like, wow, that looks kind of cool, and it turned out not to be. It was a total disaster. Now, we have Fire Festival 2. So, the breakdown is this. Billy McFarlane got out of prison uh, and he's been out of prison for about a year, okay? At this point, after being in prison, he said to himself, what if we did this again? Now, the assumption here is that he's going to try to do it legally. He's going to actually hold up his end of the bargain. But again, what musical artist and what consumer would be interested in giving Billy McFarlane another chance after what he did back in 2017? I quite frankly can't understand it. But apparently... Some people are interested in giving him another chance. It's outrageous. So real quick, let's look at this article, okay? This is from Business Insider. This came out literally like two days ago. Billy McFarlane, a year out of prison, says Fire Festival 2 is finally happening. Billy McFarlane, the creator behind the failed Fire Festival, is floating the idea of a possible follow-up. Fire Festival 2. 
is finally happening. Let's look at the tweet. I'm curious now at this point. I want to see the reaction to his tweet because there's no way on God's green earth people are actually on board with this. I can't believe I just I can't believe it. Okay, here we go. Someone said, I'll show up with 100 crates full of bananas. No one will go hungry this time. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Okay. And then Billy said, looping in uh, real Andy King to advise on how much this will run us with customs. Jesus Christ. So obviously he's leaning into it, right? Billy McFarlane is leaning in to the jokes and all that stuff, which I mean, on a, I guess in, um, in a perspective of if you're trying to get something off the ground and you failed one time and you're trying to do it again, the right thing to do would be to lean into it. I understand that. That would be the right thing to do. Um, because obviously he's trying to make this work, but he's also making himself look like a fool, right? Okay. I'm gonna talk to customs to see how much that'll cost. Like Billy, come on, dude, be real. Like be for real. It's the issue is too. He's not even addressing what happened. He's not even addressing the fact that he's naming this the same festival name that it was before. He didn't even have enough creative juice in his brain to say to himself, let me name it something else. You're going to let, you're going to name the same failed music festival the same name, it, it, it really blows my mind. Uh, Stephen Ullman said, or Stephen Ullman said, greatest comeback since the QR code. I'm here for it. I think if you did a daily, weekly video on finances, it would be killer. Projected costs, ticket sales, logistics, etc. Let people buy into what you're doing right now. And of course, Billy said love. The fact that someone like this would even say that, I'm not upset about. What I'm upset about is there are people who are genuinely curious and interested in a fire festival too like this this same statement can be made about any project right anybody who's trying to get something off the ground should focus on these subjects right making daily weekly videos making daily and weekly videos um about their process this is smart marketing but again with regards to fire festival 2 no absolutely not all right, somebody, somebody else said, can I bring my therapist? Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Someone said, I'll do the customs. No fellatio required. Oh, no. Okay, so if you don't know what this joke is about, basically during the, during the documentary on Netflix, one of the people that were, was over the uh, event and trying to get everything together, he um, admitted, this guy right here, admitted to the fact that he had to actually... Um, he had to suck somebody up. You know what I'm talking about. He had to he had to deep throat somebody in order to get something done for Billy McFarlane. Uh, and Billy never thanked him for it. Yeah. So this guy, you know, put a whole slab of meat in his throat and he never even got a high five for it. You know what I mean? Like Billy McFarlane just didn't care the amount of sacrifices the people around him were making to make this thing happen. So it was sad all the way around. But I mean, anyway, the last piece I want to talk about is Ja Rule. So Ja Rule in all of this was actually one of the bigger marketing tools for Fire Festival, okay? Because what he was, he was a musical talent that was well known and he obviously was the celebrity uh, connection to all of this. So when all of this happened, Ja Rule uh, during the interviews and during the documentaries was like, yeah, man, it's gonna work. I'm so excited. Yeah. And then finally, when everything came down the pipeline, all he did was point the finger at Billy McFarlane. He was like, oh, Billy did it, man. I had nothing to do with it, which was smart. I mean, with regards to his uh, position in all of this, he got out scot-free. He didn't go to jail. He, he didn't, I don't even think he paid a fine because ultimately all he was was the face of the event, as obviously you can see here. He was the face of the event, but he did not set it up. So Ja Rule got out scot-free. I mean, honestly, if he were to get involved again, that wouldn't surprise me very much because it's like... Yeah, I mean, he didn't really get in trouble for it last time. So if Billy McFarlane wants to do this again, I think at least he should change the name of the festival. The fact that he would name it Fire Festival 2, it sounds like a continuation of a disaster. It sounds like you it sounds like Titanic 2. You know what I mean? It it just doesn't sound good. So I mean, if he's gonna do it, I can't stop him, right? You can't stop him. Uh at least change the name. That's all I'm saying. So, hey, how about this? Comment below. Tell me what name you think he should change the festival to. Now, again, I can't stop him from doing this festival, and neither can you. But, I mean, at least if he's going to do it, he should change the name. Um, 
all in all, I think this is a mistake. I, I, I really, I've seen a lot of music festivals before and uh, it actually reminds me a lot of the uh, Astro World uh, concert festival where, you know, unfortunately people lost their lives. There's just something that it's eerie about the fact that somebody like Billy McFarlane could even think to conjure an idea to do something like this again uh, without the proper tools, without the proper help. And even if he had all the proper help and tools, I still don't trust it. And I don't think you should either. Okay. So all these news outlets that are promoting this and they're out here saying, oh, Fire Festival 2, it's just headlines. Okay. This video is designed to tell you to not trust this guy. Do not trust Billy McFarlane. Do not put your money in his project. Do not look at this twice. Do not look at Fire Festival 2 at all. Don't look at the ads. Don't look at any of it. Don't interact with it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. I'll be the first media outlet to tell you, do not engage with Billy McFarlane. I think this is a big old trick. I think this is a ruse. And even if I'm proven wrong, I'm still going to feel that way because at minimum, he could change the name of the festival and he didn't. So if you want to go enjoy Fire Festival Disaster Part 2, you're more than welcome to. Uh, that's just me. But comment below. Tell me what you think. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think he should at least change the name of the festival or am I tripping? Okay, subscribe, do all that stuff. <sighs> Thanks.